Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Yesterday I put out a video where I was reporting on XRP Ledger scaling issues, which is a video that, as I cited at the time, I thought I'd never have to make after all. Uh, XRP Ledger is supposed to handle up to 1,500 transactions per second, and then there are ways to scale moving forward should we start to bump up against that, including batching payments, all sorts of stuff I've talked about before. And uh, the good news is that, that part, as far as transactions per second, it's not a concern. That's not the reason there are scaling issues. Uh, it, and it, it turns out it just has to do with, I think, a lot of these airdrops probably pushing this. Uh, trust lines being activated way more users than uh, you know, developers ever thought would be active on the XRP Ledger at, uh, at one moment in time. Uh, that's what's caused this. Uh, and so, unfortunately, there's more negative updates today, or more negative occurrences regarding the functionality of the XRP Ledger. But, to be clear, this is not a doomsday scenario. It's a serious problem that's being addressed. It is not a doomsday scenario. And even to this point, uh, it seems to have not shaken the, the confidence of uh, holders of XRP globally, as it hasn't impacted, at least at the time of recording this, the, the price of XRP at all. It hasn't moved at all. And uh, I think it would be irrational to... I'm not telling you to buy or sell or hold. You do whatever you want. But from my perspective, it doesn't make any sense to freak out right now. It really doesn't. And so um, I, I, I just, I'm just i going to do my best to share what I know at this point. Uh, keep in mind, please, I am not a developer, so I'm doing my best to understand what's coming from people who are developers. And uh, I think you'll be able to understand if you're not a developer, and most of us aren't, uh, it's not always easy to translate what's going on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you the latest updates and the latest mishaps and uh, unfortunate occurrences that have occurred with the XRP Ledger today. And uh, I also want to be clear, and I mentioned this in my video yesterday, uh, this is not some sort of hypey hype channel. If there's bad, scary, negative things happening with XRP or the, the you know the, the adoption of XRP or the XRP ledger itself, whatever it may be, uh, I'm going to take those uh, concerns head on because I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be blind when it comes to the long-term viability of XRP. If there's a train wreck a coming, I want to know because if it ever seemed to me that things were actually going to crash and go away forever, I'd want to know so I could abort mission, wouldn't you? So I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I don't believe that at all. I'm just want, I just want to express where I'm coming from on this. Um, I also want to be clear again, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say are right. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. And so very briefly, I want to get people caught up in case you missed the video yesterday. Uh, here's a tweet from Wheatsay Wind, who is a, uh, a developer at uh, XRPL Labs, which is funded actually through Ripple's Spring Initiative. The, the Spring Initiative has since been rebranded as Ripple X. And so we'd say when a uh, stand-up guy, very well known within the XRP community, and uh, his organization, XRPL Labs, has created the Sum Wallet, spelled X-U-M-M, -M, the Sum Wallet. So it's the letter X, but it's pronounced S because that's because reasons, that's why. It, it's fine. <laughs> that's what people do. Just like when Spring, it was, <laughs> when Spring, before it was rebranded re Ripple X, it was, it was uh, written X-P-R-I-N-G, and it was supposed to be pronounced Spring, and people were kept calling it, understandably, X Pring. Nobody would, nobody, how would you know that's supposed to be spring? I'm just saying. Anyway. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so here's what, here's what we'd say when tweeted out yesterday. Sorry, people, we're already working around the clock. The XRP ledger can't handle the current load well. The amount of trust lines and tokens has exploded beyond numbers expected slash tested. XRPL public nodes clusters are being scaled up but that isn't ready yet. And somebody named Michael wrote, this is so bad, we've only just recently started using this, thought the XRP ledger was scalable, or is this issue depending on another source? And, uh, and we too and responded and he wrote, the XRP ledger was tested on transactions per second, not on amount of trust line related traffic, not on the amount of simultaneously active users. That's where the XRP ledger needs improvement. Right. And so um, I jumped in and this is right at the beginning when I was just beginning to understand that there was a problem and what was going on. So this was like yesterday afternoon. I, I uh, responded to what Ritze Wind wrote there and I, I was just curious, just trying to get to the truth of this. 
And I, I wrote, uh, could you explain how trust line related traffic and simultaneous active users differs from congestion that occurs from regular XRP transactions and the 1,500 transactions per second limit? And so basically what I was trying to get at is, let, let's say there's a hypothetical world where there, there actually were no transactions of XRP at, at the moment. There were for that what, a long period of time, I don't care, no transactions. Well, the network's still getting congested, and so that can still happen just by a bunch of people checking their account history and actually hitting the letter, things, things of that sort, right? Uh, and so what I was trying to find out is what's, uh, not, the, not the transactions per second, I was curious, like, what's the threshold for, um, for congestion? Like, how much traffic can, can the ledger have? So outside of transactions per second, because we're not talking about XRP moving here, that's still a real limit. But other types of congestion on the ledger, how much can it handle? And I probably didn't do the best job communicating that, but it's also Twitter and it's hard to write with limited characters. But we'd say when did respond and I appreciate it. And he wrote, everybody is only looking at transactions per second, but what if 40,000 users simultaneously connect to a bunch of public nodes to check their balances, the order books, prices, lists of S word coins to add, then those nodes will get crushed under the load of the number of users even before hitting transactions per second, right? And so th th that, that's what happened to that point. And then catch up to today, and unfortunately there are more problems, but again, to be clear, uh, there do seem to be fixes. They just need to be implemented, which will take some amount of time. I, I don't know what that looks like exactly. There's a lot of people uh, who are brilliant developers, clearly working to solve the problem, working together to solve the problem globally, in fact. And so here's the official some support Twitter account who six hours ago wrote, earlier today, two hours ago, we tweeted about Q full errors. That's Q-U-E-U-E, -U -E, Q full errors. We're updating our status page when more information is known. It seems there is an unusual amount of transactions queued. This is happening to all global XRP ledger nodes. Uh, and then somebody responded, I wait, dot, dot, question mark. To which we'd say when responded this morning and wrote, all we can do, waiting till the situation stabilizes and investigate what caused this and fix whatever needs fixing to keep this from happening again, to be added to the long list of things to fix. And then in parentheses, he wrote, not on our side, XRP Labs, but about the XRP ledger in general. So he is identifying that this is an actual XRP ledger uh shortcoming however you want to word it and so that's the reality of the situation again it's not a doomsday scenario i'm i'm not freaking out in that sense i i just to me that doesn't make sense uh, i tell you what still rather be holding xrp over bitcoin or ethereum and those are worth a whole hell of a lot more in terms of market cap so you know it would be, wouldn't it be ridiculous if um if if, if, if a scaling issues like these like i've been covering here on the channel yesterday and today wouldn't it be ridiculous if these harmed the global price of XRP, but somehow the, the terrible scaling of Bitcoin and Ethereum, like with, with those blockchains, they just skate on by and money just keeps flowing in no matter how terribly they scale. Wouldn't that be completely absurd? So I, I don't I don't see that happening with XRP. No way to know for sure, uh, but not yet the end of the world. And so there was an update. I actually saved this from earlier today, and then I'm going to share with you in a moment the most recent one. Uh, but this was from uh, XRPL Labs. It wrote, update, please note, these problems aren't with xrplcluster.com slash some specific. These problems are XRP ledger wide and all XRP ledger wallets, apps, and nodes will encounter the same problems. Then they had another update and, you, and you'll see this is a different problem than yesterday. The problems seem to be globally and XRP ledger wide. The transaction queue is being reported by all nodes as unusually full, maxed out at the max, value configured at nodes. This seems to be caused by elevated network fees on the XRP ledger, causing all transactions with the default 12 drop fees to be queued. So th there's something that caused, this is the best as I can understand it, there's some, something that occurred that caused a spike in the transaction fee on the XRP ledger resulting in, uh, at least if I'm understanding this correctly, I'm doing my best here, uh, apps built on top of the XRP ledger, it looks like it caused a bunch of the transactions to, to, to get queued as a result of this. And it doesn't seem to be cleared why. In fact, they wrote here, the reason for the elevated fees is still being investigated. So we're not real, real clear at this point exactly why that happened. And then they wrote, 
Uh, due to a sudden spike in... Oh, identified. Yeah, that's right. Due to a sudden spike in load on the XRP ledger, all XRP ledger nodes are currently having trouble staying in sync. Most nodes deadlock at moments. This affects all nodes, full history, non-full history, and submission nodes. Also, separate nodes outside of the cluster are affected as this is caused by overall network load. And then here's the most recent update. And uh, I don't know if, if some of this might overlap. I don't know if they updated 100% of it, but let me go through this here. Uh, they wrote here, this is from XRPL Labs. Monitoring, XRP Ledger validator operators are currently joining forces to update their validator configuration to allow validators to have a higher target amount of transactions per closed ledger. This should clean the transaction queue faster as the network transaction queue is currently growing at the same rate it is being cleared. Also, a problem has been identified in the source code of the software powering the XRP ledger, uh, nodes and validators. Weird emergent behavior in the modules responsible for ledger size and fee escalation are keeping this situation from resolving itself due to a feedback loop between the two mechanisms. So to be clear, let me pause here to note, again, they've identified a problem, it is something that is solvable, and it, it doesn't mean that this is a problem that's going to persist within the XRP ledger in perpetuity. It doesn't mean it's going to be here forever. It is a real problem. It is serious, but it can be fixed. This is not a doomsday scenario, scenario folks. There's no indication we're anywhere near that, even though it is a serious problem. Anyway, they continue. Finally, some and other clients limit the fee escalation they will work with to prevent users from overpaying transaction fees. We will add a fee selection option in the upcoming 2.2.5 release of SUM for those who prefer to manually override and pay a higher fee anyway to get a transaction through even if transaction queues are full. Now addressing the three items above will result in the following. They've got three, uh, three points here. Number one, validators emptying, emptying the queue faster. This will hopefully clear the queue and allow the ledger to resume normal operation. Number two, looking to update the source code of Ripple, the source code powering XRP ledger nodes. See if fee escalation and transaction queue processing slash cleaning can be handled smarter. Three, by adding fee selection to sum, even if this happens again, users could opt in to pay a higher network fee to get their transaction through. So there you go. See, look, they've identified fixes. This is all taking a lot of work, obviously but these are actual, actual fixes here. It looks like the rest of the updates, I think this is what I, yeah, that's what I already covered here. So we're good on that. Um, a couple other things I wanted to cover. Somebody wrote on Twitter here, if the ledger can't handle some tokens, so they're referencing airdrops, of course, like bogging things down. If the ledger can't handle some tokens, it surely won't be able to handle global payment volumes. Good thing we are noticing this today so we can fix it and not in two or three years from now, uh, when it could be more likely for incoming institutional adoption to shy away. Well, look, yeah, glad we're figuring this out now, but uh, you, the first part of your statement there is absolutely incorrect. And Ripple employee Matt Hamilton corrected that, and he wrote the following. The issue is not so much with global payment volumes. It is more that there is a particular load pattern that people are doing around trust lines that has not been seen or anticipated in the past, coupled with a lot of services with hard-coded 10-drop transactions failing. So, and we already talked about as far as the, the, the number of drops, that's something that can be changed moving forward. It's, it, that's, that's what I'm gathering from the developers anyway. So that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, and then there was this from Thomas Silkjer, uh, who was the creator, you can see here, the uh, CEO and founder of XR Plur, which I'm sure many of you are aware of within the XRP community. He's also a Forbes contributor. And so he wrote the, the following while sharing some, a tweet from Wheat Say Win from yesterday, the one that I, I started the video with for catching you all up to speed. Uh, and Thomas wrote the following. So basically, the meme coin airdrop craze is a distributed denial of service attack on the XRP ledger. Which, let me just pause. That's an interesting way of looking at it. Uh, you know... It, you know, there's a reason that there's a small transaction fee for every every time you move XRP. It's to prevent denial of service attacks. And so this is an interesting way. And so I don't know that this is, I mean, it's still something that could be costly if like there were a central entity trying to coordinate something like this. But it, it's kind of having the same net result for the end user, isn't it? So I just thought it was an interesting take on it. And then Thomas wrote, the only upside is that people are willing to pay for thin air on the decentralized exchange so issuers can leech on the XRP ledger and make thousands by dumping their coins. I'm in favor of, at least temporarily, 
introducing an increased fee to create trust lines and even increasing owner reserves. If the token has a value, paying a small extra fee to be able to hold and use it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, and so that's an interesting take. So th this may have been, to what degree, I don't know, but this, this could have been an interesting side effect of reducing the amount to necessary to create a trust line and the, the XRP, just the, the overall reserve account, as I've reported recently, it actually was voted and, and, and decreased. Uh, so going up some nominal amounts to what degree this would fix it, I don't know, but any amount higher, you'd think it would help solve this specific problem. Not that it's a, a fix. That, that's why he said, again, he, you know, he wrote, this is a temporary fix. Not that he wants, he's not saying he wants these to be higher. It's just that's better than the ledger not working, right? And so what's been happening with all of these ridiculous number of airdrops, it's become quite clearly problematic. And, he, and he, Leonidas, I saw this tweet here. He's the creator of XRP Arcade. Um, he, uh, he tweeted here, uh, reducing the trust line fee was a mistake. So the, different people have different opinions. Uh, I mean, I'm willing to hear both sides. It sounds like a compelling argument that perhaps uh, it was bad and perhaps even if just in the short term, it should be adjusted, but that's up to uh, the, the you know participants on the network to, to figure out and vote on. So it is what it is, but uh, that's that's pretty well the, uh, the update that I got for you at this point in time. Um, so I guess I'll go ahead and wrap up there. But again, it's not time to freak out. It's time to just, you know, let developers do what they do because the vast majority of humans within our community have no skills or ability to fix this. But there's a certain percentage of truly brilliant people within the community who are working hard uh, to, to make things better. And and that's that's what I know to this point. But uh, and I'll continue to update you again. The world will keep on spinning. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon Lambo.